Get in, buckle up, and come for a ride with the Hoonatics. Cars, bikes, and anything else with an engine in it. Let's go. We are getting ready to dive down the rabbit hole of, I don't know what episode, there's been that many, but we are going to talk about, don't say anything, we're going to talk about something that is dear and near to your heart, right? Put your hands in that position, put your hands in that position. We're going to talk about motorbike riding, but not riding motorbikes. We're talking to famous people who might ride motorbikes, including yourself, of course. I'm just going to stop here for a second, Jason. This is episode three. Is it three? So, oh. so, like, you know, for the intellectual people at home that can count to more than three, yeah. this is Jason. You can only yeah. count to three. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, motorbikes. Now, um, anyone who knows me knows I love bikes, riding, building, seeing, hanging out with bike people, living, breathing, biking stuff. I've seen your shed. I've seen yeah, your shed. Yeah, bikes is Bikes is my thing. What's and the one thing you hate in your shed the most? Um, and you want gone out of your shed? Well, I don't hate it. No, I've got a drag car, but <laughs> I, I don't hate it. I just want, I just want to finish it. I, I stand in your so shed I and I go, like, there's, a bike there. a bike. there's a bike there. Oh, there's a bike in parts up there. Oh, there's a model bike there. There's a picture of a bike there. And then there's a drag car. I, I, I just want to sell it. I want it gone so I can put my bikes in here. You know, I build no, a trailer so I can put bikes into the trailer. As a, as a project, though, I do want to finish it and see it finished because you know, I want to see the end result. But oh. once once it's – when if I sell it, I do whatever with it. It means more room for more bikes. Correct. So, Correct. You're a passionate guy and I understand it. So. And – What's yeah, coming I mean, up? What's coming up on this episode? You've got somebody who I don't really know a huge amount about, which surprises me. So, but I'm very keen because I know some of the credentials. Go. Well, I'm going to wind back a bit and say that um, being Aussies, we are a country. I mean, there's plenty of big names out there, but we are a country who has supplied the probably one of the biggest number, apart from probably Spain, um, of world class motorbike riders. Mm. Um, to date, you know, yeah, you only have to you run out of fingers naming like you know everyone knows McDoan, Troy Bayless, Troy Corsa. It just goes for for days, you know, Wayne Gardner, all them. But um, Mark Boxer, yeah, yeah, you know, from the you know want to be hack stunt riding days. Yeah, Matt Mingo is probably sitting at home laughing right now, and I would be if I was here. Like this, <laughs> <laughs> nah, love you, Matt. Um, not in a good way. Uh, he no. Nah, anyway, we won't go down that road. So. Um, yeah, I've been pretty lucky to, you know, and it's all stuff that I've instigated myself mm. to go to some pretty cool events, meet some pretty cool people, and um, I'm only just scratching the surface of the stuff I want to do with bikes. And um, a couple of cool things I've been able to do the last couple of years is to go to the Isle of Man. I've been there three times now. That's fairyland, isn't it? Oh, it's just, it's the best place on earth. If mm. you're into bikes, it is the, it's bike wonderland. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Everyone there's into bikes. You're just talking about bikes the whole time. You're watching bikes, looking at cool bikes, <laughs> following bikes, riding bikes, doing everything bike related. It is bike paradise. I've just got this this, this picture in my mind, Rory, of a car drives past and the horde just go kill it, kill it, and run at the car. Oh, know? but you know, I mean, the Isle of Man's only got eighty thousand people in it, and I yeah. think the population doubles <laughs> during the TT, which is uh, yeah, which is a thing. So. One of the guys we've got coming in tonight is Davo Johnson. He's yes. actually from Adelaide. Yeah, awesome guy, hilarious to hang out with. He is. Um, but that guy can ride a bike. He I, is, I bumped into him at the beach, but I'm not going to tell uh, you. We'll talk about yeah. it a bit later on. He is just and he's yeah. he's just so cruisy. But put him on a bike, and oh my god, the guy yeah. can ride. He is super fast. He's now the fastest Aussie around the island. That's Man. awesome. And we're going to have him on the show. Object. Who's the second person coming in? You told me about the first person. Dave Johnson, crazy mental TT rider from Australia who's the king of the hill. Who's the second person? The second guy is also a brilliant rider, also from Adelaide. Right. Uh, he has been in the UK for quite a while now. Um, I would say living the dream. Such a cool guy. Really entertaining to watch on a bike. Like, he doesn't ride the bike in a clinical manner like some... Like, you look at um, MotoGP, like you get your Jorge Lorenzo's and yep. stuff like Very clinical rider. 
uh, very precise and stuff like that. And it, you know, it's amazing to watch, but sometimes you're like, Ugh. you know, you just want to see someone manhandling a bike and having <laughs> yeah. fun on it, and yeah, 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 throwing it around. It's almost yeah. like the freestyle BMX of bike racing. Well, that should be an extension of your body. And, um, and yeah, and our guest that's coming in is Billy McConnell. Now, I've heard his name before. Well, in as far as um, Adelaide goes, his dad Kim runs a, a bike shop here. He's been around the bike racing scene for quite a while, and. Um, both Davo and Billy, their dads have both been in the industry for a long time. Davo's dad, Murray, um, legend himself, he's been a bike racer for years, done everything from drag racing on nitro Harleys, all mm. sorts of stuff like that. So I think neither of them had a choice in the in the fact. <laughs> but both of them have obviously been brought up and been um, passionate bike guys since day yeah. one because they've seen the passion come through from their fathers. So that's well, that's my opinion. I don't really know their families well enough, but I, I know a bit of the story. But Billy, he is now racing British Superbikes. He's right, okay. won numerous um, uh, championships, um, including uh, 600 Super Sport. Oh, wow. Over there. Um, very accomplished rider, very good rider. Um, he also, um, we'll talk a bit more about um, what he does outside the track. He um, is a test rider for oh, the Triumph okay. Factory. Far out, that's huge. Um, which is awesome. Like They get to go out and work with the engineers and the development teams to just ride. And, you know, riding a motorbike for a living is cool. Yeah. Even yeah. even if it is um, monotonous riding and testing yeah. and, and developing. But it's seat time, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I mean, there's obviously a fair level of respect for what he does and his abilities on a bike because... Well, his legacy is the bike that he's testing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is, too, is it's like, um yeah, there's a lot of really good riders out there, but for the factory to want him to ride, they respect his knowledge and his feedback yep. on what he does. So be cool to have a chat to him. He sounds like an interesting guy. Oh, 100%. So... Yeah. I think um, without further ado, we'll have a, a quick water break because it's Adelaide. Yeah, it's yeah. about 50,000 degrees outside, so it's getting warm in here even though we've got the aircon on. We're going to have a quick... And I am wearing my vintage full lock motorsport oh, and, shirt. And, Do you like that? And, you know, we are both wearing the same gear that we were wearing in the last podcast. And no, we haven't skipped laundry day. It's because we have we've actually just done two podcasts in a row. Yeah. And forgot to bring a second shirt with. Well, I did have a second shirt, but I actually am so attached. I haven't worn this in 20 years and I still look good in it. So let's, <laughs> let's have a quick uh, glass of water outside and, uh, and a pit stop, and uh, we'll bring in our guests. Get in, buckle up, and come for a ride with the Hoonatics. Cars, bikes, and anything else with an engine in it, let's go. You'd think that was me, but it's actually not. No, it's, it's not. not. It's my voice double. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is you the one that does the Hoon TV bit? No, no. Oh. Hoon TV! Yeah. No, Hoon it's not TV. No. <laughs> I, I have a, um, for all the arse work that I do on TV, I have an arse double and I have a voice double. So, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. believe it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we have a look at my real one. <laughs> we are talking motorbikes. Something that you don't ride? Oh, you'd like to think I didn't, but I have many stories in the back catalogue of uh, Jason O'Halloran that is going to, you know, make your toes curl. All right? So hope you boys are ready to live up to the uh, expectation. Yeah? No, well, you, know, I'm a, you know I'm a bike guy, but I'm a bike guy, just an idiot that rides a bit. But we've got two guys in the studio tonight who are professional professional idiots no <laughs> <laughs> no we've got two been said before. very very well known Aussie motorbike racers here both from Adelaide uh, let's have a quick chat and, uh, Absolutely. and learn a bit more about what these guys have been up to and what they're up to so to my right here I have Billy McConnell Billy tell us uh, tell us a bit about your history in bike racing what got you started and, and what you're doing these days yeah, so uh, pretty much my dad used to race uh, Speedway and pretty much just got into motorcycle racing and yeah, was um, into jet ski racing at the start nice. and then we got into bike racing and, and then pretty much straight into um, road racing, really, a little bit of motocross and then straight into road racing and it was funny because I um, sort of started uh, meeting Davo through the racetrack and then we actually got one of his original 125 so we ended up, well, on his first learning bike, we sort of took over that as well so uh, that's and that's how me and Davo met, and then we went from that. Um, got a stock 600, then did the Australian Super Stock 600 Championship, and uh, we finished third in that. But I missed the last three rounds because we went over to Europe because Dad had some good friends over there, and Glenn Richards' manager it was uh, Mickey G, and he put us on a bike 
that Davo was riding for in the same team, Crystal Yamaha, because they were both out injured, him and Peter Ward, and then jumped on that, and we won that race and got pole position and sort of never come back to Australia after that, only just for um, summer holidays. So um, the following year after that, we won the R6 Cup, which was um, still probably, I think to this day, one of the biggest prizes in motorsport history, where if you win it, everyone's on stock R6s, and if you win the class, you get a full factory superbike ride for the year after. Um, riding for the factory MR team, which is sort of unheard of to jump straight from a, a rookie class straight into a professional super bike well, role. Uh, let's just cut it out there. But uh, if, if anyone's going to do it, an Australian's going to do it. <laughs> they, okay? yeah. Two Australians yeah. were Dyson for it. There's another yeah, Aussie. it was me and Brendan Roberts. We were head-to-head -head for it. And then David Anthony was as well was in the mix. But, yeah, we were the first Aussie to win it. It was only three years before that. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then that was my professional career kick-started then. So from Virgin and from that whole R6 Cup, we sort of never looked back from there and Unfortunately, that doesn't run anymore, and I think uh, there was a lot of good races that did it. Tommy Hill, Cal Crutchlow, and um, a lot of top riders that come through it, and I think if it wasn't for that, they probably wouldn't have been seen and um, sort of made it where they are now. Um, yeah, so it's um, 2019 this year, but tell us a bit about what you did last year and what you're doing this year. Yeah, so last year we rode for the um, official Suzuki team, Bill Bay Suzuki, um, in Superstock, because the previous year I rode for FS3 Kawasaki, and we had a massive crash and dislocated my hip so um, basically the rule over there is out of sight out of mind so hey, ha hang on a second you said we just put it back in the context you <laughs> had to crash <laughs> yeah. you dislocated your own hip well is that right? yeah well that's correct but every time you crash with a team they always say you oh. but then when I crash I say we so oh. you know it's one of them they say well I win together lose together but yeah <laughs> depends yeah it depends who, who you're running for <laughs> so yeah unfortunately we had that hip injury and then um, it's very hard to get a contract when you've missed the last three or four rounds so we uh, got together with my, one of my sponsors, Chris Fairburn, and uh, he does a lot with Bill Base and um, sort of pushed the envelope there for us to go there. And the rule was meant to be if we finish top three, we end up on a superbike ride for, for this year. And um, we finished second in the class, and then the team were um, a little bit hesitant with um, renewing the contract. So we um, took another step which was uh, with a new Suzuki team called OMG Suzuki, which um, they really wanted me on board and believed in everything I had. And um, I felt like that was the best thing for me to do another year in Superstock um, because I felt like they were really believing in me and what, what the opportunity for me to ride with them. I was lucky enough to work a bit in the UK the last couple of years and British Superbox is massive over like, the motorbike mm. industry scene. Everything over there is huge and BSB is the pinnacle and to ride in that at the top level you have to be really good. Well, I think you see that on the weekend. You know, Leon Haslam stepped back in the World Superbike. He's the BSB champion last year and he was almost uh, beating the world superbike champion Johnny Ray and now getting two thirds and a crash so you know the level of BSB has always been is been there and uh, the level of support is is always there as well um, you know you get the Ducatis to the Suzuki's to every brand and manufacturer out there you know racing in the top five because all controlled ECU controlled tyres so it takes a lot of the politics out um, so yeah it's a it's a good class and I yeah I've like me and Dave, we've spent a lot of time there now. You sort of get trapped in between two worlds, you know. When you're there, you can't wait to get back here. And then when you're here, you sort of start looking forward to a new year and looking to it approaching. Across the table as well, Davo Johnson. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> now, Davo, um, you started off the same as Billy. You're on circuit over there. But um, what have you been doing the last few years? Uh, well, I yeah, I started in, I went back. Well, to UK 2002, so that was um, this is 19 years now. I know, 18, 19 years. Don't count years. back. Don't count back. It's too too. I familiar. know, but I just it's I still spun out. That's to weird because he's only 23 years old, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Peter Penn, David. <laughs> yeah, he lives but, in Neverland. <laughs> yeah, but I, I sort of went. I got through the ranks there and and end up racing in in mainland Europe as well, and then sort of struggled getting on the good bikes, which um, is always an issue. Like. I was winning super stock races and I won races in European championships, but uh, kind of BSB and just couldn't go down a bike that was competitive. Like I was the second half off the pace before I even got to the circuit, just with the, the way the bikes and tires and that were at that, at that time was a tire war. Um, so then I got the opportunity to race the Isle of Man uh, with the Honda team there and sort of uh, just thought I'll just do the Isle of Man once because I've always been good at learning circuits. Tick the box, tick the box. Tick the box. And uh, yeah, now I'm nine years deep at the Isle of Man, and that's uh, yeah. But you, 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 hang on a second, you're not, not not nine years deep. Tell us about what you've achieved at the Isle of Man. Wear it with a badge of honour. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, got up to the point where I got to the like the fastest Aussie, and and uh, I, broke, I broke a couple of records as a newcomer as well in my first year. 
and then uh, yeah, I use that as a backwards step to sort of. I thought it was. I mean, everyone wants to do the Isle of Man. I mean, well, not everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to sort of be there and look at it, and some want to do it. And I would, so I ticked that box, and then the ride started coming. It um, it put me out there more, and uh, people people more could see what I what I could do, what I was capable of. And then from then on, the, yeah, the better ride just kept coming and coming. And uh, the Isle of Man is probably to the uninitiated best like skinny dipping with a great white shark, right? At <laughs> some point in time, you're going to get bit. And you're going to get bit really, really, really hard. Not necessarily. I mean, it's um, if you hit the wrong wall. Yeah, you if, can. If you decide if you to take the phone, it depends on what man- mentality you got. Really, like I've always had my mentality, my way of riding sort of favours the TT. Whereas, like I say, Billy, any, anyone who's <laughs> watched, before, any, yeah. anyone who's watched him race, like you just freaking. If he says I'm going to do TT, I'll say F- no, you're not. <laughs> and <laughs> like, let's put it in a TT in program this year. Yeah, yeah, the TT programs, like uh, the main program, they sell worldwide. And um, I actually mentioned Billy in there that uh, if if Billy McConnell did the Isle of Man TT, he wouldn't even make it to Bray Hill. And Bray Hill is like not even a mile into the circuit. <laughs> it's not even a corner yet. <laughs> yeah. this, it's not for everyone. Well, well you, you know, you're nine years into this deal. Are, are you saying to yourself at some point in time, I'm done. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go any further. I've I've achieved what I want to achieve, and then start to look at that side hustle and go. I'm gonna focus on that now. Uh, possibly. I mean, I've not really thought about it too much, but um, I'm just focused on I'm doing a good job, and um, as long as I'm doing a good job, okay. Well, the sun shines. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I seem to be even on like short circuits. I'm, I can go back to BSB in the super stock and be straight at the front and. It's just, it's better. It's my, I'm riding, I'm riding better. I'm 36 now and I'm riding better now than I ever have. 36. And it's, yeah, um, 36. I don't even remember being 36. <laughs> so but I mean, I went over there when I was eight, when I was a teenager. So, and it, How old are you, Billy? 32. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> That's old now, mate, racing. The thing is, <laughs> with racing, like. Well, Mark has world champion before he was 20. Yeah. How old are you, Mark? <laughs> Uh, Add the GST portion onto yours, I think. (laughs) Dave, what I want to ask you, though, and I mean, I've known you for a little while now, I've caught up with you at TT a few times as well. Um, What was it like for you the very first time you took off Mm. around that course? I mean, obviously, doing the TT, I mean, every man his dog that's in the box, what's the TT 3D thing? That's how you get the the full TT experience without going there. Mm. But... After you'd done all your training and, and learning the course and that thing, what was going through your mind the very first time you took off? Um, it was a weird feeling. I was shit myself massively. Like and it's um and it was actually a damp track as well. Like it, we had to do our induction lap as newcomers. And um yeah, it took off and the, and the track was, was when damp. You, when you do the induction, do you have to achieve a certain speed? Uh, not in in the f- no. During qualifying practice what you do, you have to go within I think it's hundred and fifteen miles an hour average lap. Average, which is quite a quick lap. The lap record in the eighties was a set minute set was a hundred and seventeen miles now. Right. So um, it's not easy to even qualify really. But um, what's, yeah, your, what's your current average lap? Um, one hundred and thirty one and just under one thirty two. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which um, yeah would've, would have been a one thirty two, wouldn't it? It's got held oh, up on the last lap. I, yeah. yeah well, the someone was already celebrating on the last lap, and Dave got caught up. Yeah, in that one, but. Um, yeah, it would have, would have been a lot quicker last year as well if freaking bite didn't. What's the up. fastest average? 135, 134, 135, I think. What actual fastest overall? Just yeah. this year, wasn't it? Mm, last year. Yeah, last year, sorry. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I hope Got you don't mind me too. asking these 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 uh, you know naive questions about it, but it, 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 it it's always intrigued me. Um, you look at the place, Nigel Mansell lives there. You know, it's like you know where the dragons are of the UK in the middle of the water and then yeah. you guys go out there with mics and just carve the place up it's just yeah, outstanding the whole, the whole island is a, it's you know until you go there you watch it on TV and they show you the bits but until you go there the whole atmosphere is you know like when you're riding around the streets on the hills and, and you, you nod at a fellow bike rider and you feel oh it's, you know it's pretty cool and you go there and the whole island is just full of bike riders yeah. so yeah. It's sort of, you don't really get any trouble everyone out on the streets having a good time the parties yeah. afterwards everyone's there for the same reason then the bike riders go out and you know until you see them go through and then they just look like gladiators going out you know it's just yeah. it's just yeah. something yeah. special when i first watched dave go through when he was in his chrome norton leathers and that were there with a few of the boys and you know having a few beers and he come through and just like the the speed of it and the accuracy of it through the track you know this it looked like a looked like superman going around there you know it was just something pretty special to watch and then the only sad well not sad the hardest thing about it is listen to a radio because you can't see it like a short circuit yeah 
you got to wait until they go through checkpoints, and obviously they're doing commentary on everyone. Well, you just want to hear about your mates. So yeah. that's the hardest thing. Even the mechanics say it's hard because you wait what 17 minutes before they can have a cup of tea and that before they come around for the next lap, <laughs> which yeah. is it's just, you know that's so unique on its own itself. You know, so but then even the scoreboard there is um, all done from the scouts. So they put the laps on chalk, and you know the history is there still from when it first started. So even just from a normal spectator bike person, just to go there and and, and witness it, you, you, even even if you don't into the TT as such, you can't help but have a good time there from the museums to the island to when the weather's beautiful. It's I think this spooky. year is, what, 112 years that it's been going for? 2007 was the 100th anniversary? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. but um, like Billy's right. Um, I've been three years in a row now and um, I want to go again this year because, you know, in the movie Happy Gilmore, he goes to his happy place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like for me. I say the Isle of Man's my happy place because you just go there. Everyone's just buzzing. Everyone's in a really good mood. It's funny, you, you, you know. Just, you're surrounded by your people. Because when you look at the great lunatic asylums of the world, they're always on an island. <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't, don't worry. You see a few special people there. That's sort of what makes it pretty entertaining as if, well. If ever you wanted to take out the entire world's population of those lane cutters in traffic, just take that island out at that certain <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, I think that's done. what they call a Mad Wednesday, and that's when you see all the wannabe Mad Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. you see all the wannabe heroes out there. Then I, I want to get onto what you and I were doing recently, but before I get there, I just want to come back to TT racing and superbike riding, right? And well, let's let's just quickly um, talk to Davo about what you're doing this year because it's pretty significant. You've had a few pretty awesome bike rides in your time, but. You've just signed recently a contract for this year's race. Who's that with? Yeah, it's with Factory Honda, Honda, U- Honda Europe. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's all looking good. And it's, it's basically like um, McGuinness is the same team that McGuinness is with a few years ago. Well, it's with the same team, Joey Dunlop and all, yeah. the, all the legends that rode for the team, so it's pretty special for... <laughs> Mark salivating because he's a, Dun- he's a <laughs> oh, he Dunlop. Li- yeah. <laughs> yeah, he likes Hondas. But, yeah, I'm very looking forward to it. I mean, it's going to be... I mean, last year I was with the Golf BMW team and it uh, went really well with them. And we actually beat the factory team, the factory Honda team. So it was, uh, it was there was a few options on the table and it was just one I really wanted to look into because the, the last three years it was quite um, documented. The one that when uh, McGuinness had himself and Guy Martin was riding for the team as well. And uh, they didn't go very well. And Mr. Honda's there at the TT. Like you see him walking around like with his hierarchy there. He, like he's the owner of Honda, of Honda, and um, he's the way I looked at it is they ain't gonna fuck up three years in a row. That's no. so it's, not, it's not the Japanese and, way. No. no, and when um, when I signed, there's obviously the the freaking the the whatever sofa races that sit on the sofa and and troll on the internet. So there's a lot of negative about it, but I mean they've got short memories. I mean it's the most successful team. Are you excited? Ever. Very excited. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I think Honda's. I think they've got the most wins in TT yeah. to date, haven't they? Yeah. Well, McGuinness has got 23 of them. Mm. <laughs> but they, yeah, and, and, and you're right too. Straight after they had those dramas and you know the funny gearboxes and stuff like that, memes and that came out, the guys went back to the drawing board and basically completely rebuilt the bikes. And that was Guy Martin actually took that bike to the event I ran, Moto Time Attack, and it was fun. Yeah, it was yeah, riding around. It was fun. Yeah. It was like well, they, it was basically BSB spec. I think like Dave says you know Connor Cummings was on the podium in most of the races, Superbike and Stock, wasn't he? So mm. and that's and the, the same Honda. Team. So you know, just, they just get it together. I don't. I think once the time, I think Honda were a little bit behind because all the riders were injured a little bit. You know, so uh, you know, I think Dave will make the bike work there, and the team's got everything in there to make it happen. So mm. and I guess um, what would you say to guys that are sort of you know, good riders and racing no matter where they are in the world because it's a cool thing about the TT there's a lot of international riders there that are thinking about aspiring to riding that you know what what would you suggest they do and, and what do you get out of riding that event people ask me all the time like what it's like to do it and uh, mainly road guys that, that do that and I mean there's a few race guys that are thinking about doing it but if you put all the the perfect bit of racetrack that you want like and even road up in the hills there Obviously, it's dangerous on the on the road. Some short circuits are dangerous as well, but it's it's just it's basically it's got every bit of a, it's basically the perfect place to ride a motorbike. It's uh, it's got everything and it's um, challenging. That's the best thing about it. And um, like when I I was doing I was still doing it was last time, year was 2014. I was doing BSB full time as well as the TT, and I left the TT to go to Knock Hill in Scotland. I like Knock Hill as a circuit. I've had good success out at podiums and in How the past. Hands, a bit hands up if you've had a lap of Knock Hill. 
Hands up, hands up. <laughs> We've done a fair view, but have done a few? <laughs> not here in Scotland. Any, anyway, okay, oh, yeah. sorry, yeah. it's a bit of a goat track. Do, do you know oh, where then. that place is? Knock Hill. It's near Edinburgh. Well, they do. They do that uh, four they wheel. Sell haggis What's on that four wheel thing that they do? You, you come across the top, and it's like just there, isn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, it yeah. It's the <laughs> coolest place. Oh, I just thought you like. I thought you were taking a piss out. No, absolutely not. So, quick side side distraction, right? I was once at Knock Hill. I lived in Scotland for three years, and a friend of mine at the time, who's now since passed away, had a noble. Do you remember Noble Supercar is? Yeah. Uh, it was, it, the Pretty first funny. ones were a V6 Mondeo twin turbo. They're right? made in Leicester, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Molester, Leicester. One of those places, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. You come round on the front straight in this thing, right? And it was the first one in Scotland. And in front of us was about half a dozen freaking Lotus Elises, you know, like blowflies. And his name was Will Robinson. Will unloaded this, this Noble. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat. I'm just going... Holy shit. They're and fast we, we just gobbled up like 10 of them in that front straight. And you sort of come up over the crest... And then you sort of head, head down to the right, and it's a blind corner going to the right. And I thought, I swear to God, we were going to go down. off onto the road Duffers on the dip. outside. There. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's the coolest track and freezing. Really good density of air and stuff like that. I so. went into that turn one with no brakes before. Yeah, yeah. That hurt. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> well, no, but those people that, that are really watching good. at home, in all sincerity, Mark, you can bring it up on YouTube right now. It's called Challenge Charlie. At Knock Hill Raceway. Well, I'll have to upload that yeah. afterwards because um, yeah, we, we, we're keeping it, tabs on the time because these two guys have got to go to Shadows Nightclub Ooh. tonight <laughs> in, Ma- in Mount Gambia. <laughs> let, me, let me quickly get on to the second part. Recently, um, this handsome character next to me and I went down to the beach and spent some time not at Maslin's, down the road from Maslin's, the nude beach. We were <laughs> at nice Selleck's quiet beach. location. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was quiet until, you know, about... 500 motorbikes rocked up. Uh, Selex Beach, um, uh, you can look it up and work out where it is. It's a big, long, straight stretch of beach down the southern end of, of South Australia, Adelaide. And back in the day, in the 1900s and so forth, they used to use it for beach racing and, and testing the bikes, just literally flat out. They wouldn't tell anybody they are doing it. they just rock up, suddenly start running. The Levis Motorcycle Club have put on an event um, biannually now, and you were a bit of a guest down there what did you think of the event the venue the location everything the whole lot loved it it was awesome i mean the lo- i went there what when they went in 2018 but before that i was nine years old and i was there <laughs> and i was watching my dad ride the exact same bike i was riding the other day what so. was that bike it was a yellow frame bike Tell yeah me it's a it. triumph uh, bonneville 650 yeah pre-unit 62 model but it, it was very different to the other bikes do you know what what was different about the about that bike um it wasn't overly. It wasn't. It, I don't know. It just had. Uh, it was more purpose built, really. Yeah. It's um, purpose built yeah. for the sand. Yeah, it, that's the only race that it raced in the Selex Beach in the seventies. That bike, exact same bike. So, so I'll just push this across to Billy and Mark, right? So the deal is, right? There's all these bikes over there, but there was one bike that just seemed that when he when he when, when the rider snapped the throttle, like it went. Do you know what I mean? Like all the others were sort of like chuk, 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 and took <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, but that's not the bike. That's Davo. <laughs> yeah, well, there was a there was a guy there on a on, on yeah, a, he was running on me phone. Yeah, yeah I was. Don't, <laughs> that was one of my jokes. That was <laughs> <laughs> my jokes. <laughs> 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 Jason, I'm Is that gonna, where you point your finger at me? It snapped and went. <laughs> I'm going to steal your um, your tangent running here. Yeah. And you've just mentioned Triumph. Yes. So we're going to go back over the other side of the table because we are on a, a thin amount of time for this yep. one. This will be one of our shorter podcasts. Billy, what do you do when you're not at the track? Yeah, we work for Triumph as a development rider with a few of the other crew there. That's um, I've been there since 2009. So, so, so now I know where the parts for your beach bike are coming from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I went. <laughs> Look went at the smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, so I've been with Triumph since 2009. So we uh, help a little bit with the the development side of things. So uh, we just had to do a little bit of feedback and stuff. But whether how much of that goes, there's the Obviously, as you can imagine, the Triumph Motorcycle Company is massive. Um, Been very fortunate enough to have a lot of input with the uh, new Moto2 engine, the 765, Um, just by doing track endurance, not any development as such with that one. But we do all the ranges. We do a lot of track endurance, um, high-speed mileage and stuff like that. So um, it's very interesting to see how a bike goes together and how um, much they test standard components, which... um, Something that I sort of think now, if I do buy a standard bike, I probably wouldn't replace a great deal other than exhaust because, you know, obviously they sound shit with a standard exhaust now because the catalytic converters and all the regulations they have to pass. But, yeah, the Triumph work is um, something very interesting. And R&D the, stuff is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and, just, uh, and how it all gets produced. They actually have a Triumph factory tour now which is uh, and a museum which is open pretty much most days to the public where they actually show a lot of the carvings and everything and how they the, do it. The circles that I once saw was power, economy, reliability, and they want to build it in the middle. 
Yeah, and for they, sure. And they compromised to put it in the middle. I think a lot of the things now is, uh, you know, the generations that were growing up on sports bikes and stuff is, you know, like, say, my dad and his dad and that. And then, you know, to get on a sports bike now with speed cameras everywhere, you sort of, the time you get it wound up, the tyres are cold and you you get on a Tiger 800 touring bike and that, and you can almost go just as fast as a sports bike through the hills unless you're going out to track days and stuff. It's um, probably one of the best communities you can get. You know, got heater groups, heater seats, you know, scre- adjustable screen, and they Sorry, still go. How old right. did you say you were? Because that's a really old man's comment. <laughs> I actually, it's I a actually, really old man's comment. Yeah. That's what we're all like these days. We want comfort. I actually, <laughs> I actually didn't didn't think I'd like that until you hop on a bike like that and you actually go, yeah. "Wow, bloody hell, this is well, unreal." Somebody in the room was driving a riding driving riding a bike with cruise control the other day, and he couldn't stop raving about it. Yeah, Could yeah, you? it's gonna be full of that, Well, that's that's <laughs> the one that you can jump on the uh, YouTube channel and watch. That's the Yamaha Nikon one. So I'll just put a little video over the top here but when when I'm talking I, when I was sorry when I've watched I've watched Bill get up in the morning when it's like minus eight degrees outside in England and he gets out he's like can't even move because of all the freaking <laughs> the yeah once I had to catch up from some oh miles man. I went to do over the weekend and uh yeah, it was minus three or four on that, and um, in the ice on the it was ice so, on the road. so cold. So I, I actually put my triathlon wetsuit on underneath my riding yeah, right. kit, and then all the other kit heater grips. I and say screw that. And then yeah. uh, I was in bed. Yeah, like, I started riding right shit, man. And all the ice, <laughs> the icicles start breaking um, up in the side the visor. So you know, I live like in from, Scotland from the movie Dumb and Dumber. Where <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I was in Scotland. I, I, the, the people I was working for had a bike shop there, and they said to me because I was the delivery driver for Mercedes Benz. Long story really short. Get your van and come with us on the weekend. I went, where are we going? He goes, we're going to the Highlands. I went, rightio, why am I bringing the van? He goes, because there's going to be 38 guys on bikes and you're going to be the pickup guy. <laughs> right? I went, what are you talking about? And along the way, guys would stop and they'd go, no, it's too cold. <laughs> Not there, you <laughs> make yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> And I had to pick good dudes up in bikes just because of that. Now, just because of that. Billy, yeah, getting back was that an excuse for picking up guys? Or? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I should tell you about the, the, the hitchhikers. Oh, no, 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 there was no. 12 of them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Anyway, yeah. anyway. I've seen a few videos. And, and another good thing, you walk into the triumph factory and you've got all these plaques on the floor and like you got Steve McQueen and all these oh, really? famous people that are in them yeah. and Billy's got, his, Billy's got yeah, a plaque yeah we got one front. there because we won the uh, Super Sport Championship for him in 2014 so how far is it away from McQueen yeah, not well, far it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not too far like, yeah, you yeah, should yeah. pace it out and see how far they had a big gap within the racing side so it was uh, we're going to have to get a photo of this sent with yeah. the TV page yeah I, I won't tell you what Davo does every time he walks over it but <laughs> I could imagine yeah. I could imagine <laughs> yeah. the word flogger comes to mind <laughs> so <laughs> this year, um, it's a pretty big year because there's massive changes in Moto2 and you've just mentioned the Moto2 bikes are all going to be Triumph powered. You were telling me, because we did a road trip recently, um, tell the viewers about, or well, the viewers and listeners, um, about what you had to do, like mileage wise on those bikes, because you were telling me. It's yeah, phenomenal, well, yeah right? you obviously have to make sure everything's reliable and stuff. And um, But yeah, we have to do extremely, uh, a lot of tests and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we sort of can't go, you know, with the Triumph sort of contract and stuff like that. But you got to do a lot of miles, make sure everything's running right, make sure they can change the engines if there's anything. And then, um, but yeah, we did about almost like two weeks there on, you know, just doing engine development and making sure the bike's perfect for the Moto2 class. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is making sure, you know, all the electronics when they go to Magneti Morelli that it doesn't affect anything else. So... Um, from that point of view, the engines were, were super strong, super powerful. I was actually fortunate enough to have a go on a proper Moto2 bike two years ago when they sounded unreal but Honda standard Honda engine is nearly at 122 horsepower so these things are nearly pushing out 140 you know 142 so Far out. it's a lot That's bigger huge. so and they sound unreal being a triple so the yeah. Moto2 class this year will be unreal you know then they'll be sliding around a lot more than what they did last year isn't that funny because you know they they censored formula one because the engines weren't giving that audible excitement and here you are bringing up the noise of the bike people really want to be excited when they're there don't they yeah well it's the first thing you go to a moto gp before you even get when you're trying to park your car and if you're a little bit late and you hear the moto gp bikes running around you your hair stands up because they don't even sound like a motorbike yeah. they just sound the formula one d's here were, were amazing because the noise would actually go through adelaide high rises and it would echo yeah, through yeah my dad works at feather uh feathered in the behind them yes uh, Coca-Cola yes. factory comes yeah. conversions and uh you could hear it from there loud as you know loud. you couldn't even hear the planes coming over when it was on as how loud it was well where monobrow used to live up in Belair, <laughs> you could go up to the um uh you know windy point you could hear them I clear could hear as them well. from my house yeah, yeah clear, clear, clear home well. from school and you could hear the formula one it's cars doing like, the a call qualifying. to excitement, isn't it? A, a mm. motorbike engine, a car engine, uh, you know, a jet engine. If you're if you're a, an enthusiast, doesn't matter what it is, you'll stop and look because it sounds right. There's mm. nothing like those V12s. Yeah, yeah. 
I wish they'd bring them back. They're freaking awesome. Well, you know, I I go back to the beach. You know, your bike was a very special sounding bike, but some of those Harleys at full noise, Mm. at full tilt, you know, a good bike engine having its neck rung correctly is just beautiful, beautiful to hear. Mm. Yeah. So I think, you know, we'll we'll work our way into winding up here, but um, I want to ask both guys a few just general motorbike-related questions because... I mean, I know I love riding bikes. It's just, it's in me. It's my thing. But um, what is it about riding bikes, Davo, that just is your thing? What, what you know, what, what do you what, love about it? When I was a kid, I, it, um, I got the, I actually got those butterflies because I'm at the same, was, I'm about to talk about the butterflies that I had when I first started. I don't get them as much now. I still get them at the TT. And that's what that's what I want. That's what I always want. On, on, on the short tracks, like I get it before a race, and um, that sort of feeling you get is like in second to none. I actually got it mm. at, at before Celix. I like I said, it's a big. It actually meant a lot for me because I wanted to win the same race that that my dad did on the exact same bike. The it was twenty six years apart, and we were actually exact same age. And I did that, so I was quite nervous before I went. And that that feeling, like, it reminded me when I was a kid when I couldn't sleep before a track day. Like, I was in bed, I was like, Fuck, what time is it, what time is it? Do you know, for that whole event, for, for both you guys, there's only two awards being handed out that he's won one of in, in, in what, what is it? It's, it's like 70, 80 years of that event. Only two awards and he's won one. Do you know what the award is? And this is a serious deal. It's absolutely serious. The fastest person at that event at Selex is called the Beachmaster, right? The Beachmaster must post the fastest time. Okay, and they must beat the time prior to the year. You can't just go oh, at this event. We were the fastest. No, you've got to beat the outright time. He did a one-mile lap on a beach on sand on a how old was that Jurassic era 62. bike? Sixty-two. <laughs> a sixty-two bike, one mile in one minute and two seconds. Look at him! Look at him! Let <laughs> one minute and two seconds on sand, and you have to go around, stop, and turn and come back. And he was beach master. It was a beach master. A huge award. We don't put enough weight on it. But, mate, even you know, it was a bloody hard award to get as yeah, well. It was, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a shame that there's not more racing like that that's allowed to happen mm. anymore with health there's and safety. There's one in the UK, though, isn't there? There's yeah, a, there's loads in the UK. UK. Um, yeah. Whatever you want to do, they'll do it. Like, and and also you, in, and, and in New Zealand. say, oh, I'm the Australian beach master. No, it's a it motocross was, race they do yeah. on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And they put a massive sand dune, like... You'd have a crack at that, wouldn't you? Oh, no, not many, people, beach race. not many people. Not many people. It's hard. Yeah, they're all on dirt bikes. You're on the wouldn't triumph. Wouldn't even make over the first freaking jump. That's one. I'm glad they didn't have jumps. But, yeah, back to that bloody... Yeah, that sort of feeling. That's that's what you strive for, and that's um, and that's what gets me racing. And then the next feeling is winning. Like when you win, like the any Billy's won so many British champ is still the I think the most successful supersport racer ever. Not just supersport Australian, actual supersport British racer ever. Like won so many races and with this championship, but and um, that feeling of winning never feels any different. I think it's the yeah, well. The thing with motorbike racing is um, it's something that if you didn't do it is a massive gap to fill for me like now if like me and Dave didn't have a bikes or a, a challenge that we're going back and doing um, is a feeling of um, not achieving something or I wouldn't actually know what I do it would actually really play on my mind and at the day sort of when I do think about what I'm going to do personal trainer yeah well no CrossFit. nothing really does bikes you know like even went to Ma- uh, Levi Day's track instructing day you know just filling in there and riding a bike and actually people actually having a little bit of an understanding and, and, and wanting to ride bikes and you see everyone there for the same reason and as a, a love of bikes, um, I wouldn't actually know what I want to do without it. And then obviously the feeling of uh, having something to go in over and try to achieve, you know, it's your own goal, it's your own achievement, it's your own effort going in. And then when you tick that off, you get that satisfaction. If you didn't, if it, like Dave, if you didn't mean anything to you, you wouldn't get those nerves. Because, like, sometimes when you don't enjoy your job, you go there every day and you hate it and you don't want to do it. But if you go there and you love it and you put so much effort into training and, and the pressure that you want a tree something, that's when you get the nerves is, is yeah. because you don't want to it's let good. yourself down. It's good. And, and then you've talked it up on radio stations and stuff like this and then you've got to go out there and back it up. So yeah. <laughs> You know what? I think, like, talking you up a bit, Billy, but um, watching you down at Mac Park is really cool because you can see just how much you love riding bikes just in the style wouldn't you agree Dave the, the way Billy rides he he's just throwing the bike around and just you can tell he's got a big cheesy grin mm. when, we're, when, we're there, when we're at night time say we're at, at a friend's house on the piss just having a few drinks and I always get Billy's races up ones that he's won 
and like because his his style on the bike is like you just go every corner is like oh, like you're just like waiting for him to like play. I watched him. I was actually commentating on the race at Knock Hill. Uh, no, uh, Thruxton. That Thruxton's like oh, it's the fastest straight. They on the super bikes do like 210, and he used a five abreast in super sport British super sport championship on the last lap. And Billy was in there, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know what was gonna happen here. And like five abreast, and then next thing, like everyone's like, well, what? Sitting up and everything. And then Billy comes out in front and wins it. <laughs> and that was like one of the best best races and that's one I always go to like to watch to and, and I mean to watch. like that style too I mean we, we were both down the, the uh, ASBK World Superbike on the weekend witnessed what happened in race one of the Superbikes mm. and there was some fairly aggressive riding happening but at the end of the day the, those guys are doing it A because they love it and B because they want to win so and you know Billy's got that style where yeah, he's, he's, you're not out if, there if, to if, come yeah, second no one over. wants to hurt each other like you know if there's an incident out there no one actually wants to do it but you wouldn't make the pass if you didn't actually believe it was going to happen because if you're doing 200 mile an hour or 200 kilometers an hour uh, and you come together and you both get it wrong you you know you're both going to suffer serious things so you wouldn't actually make the pass and sometimes they don't always come off you know you see it everywhere but and the best thing is in like that center movie the long the the, the time that you no longer go for a gap, the no longer you're a race yeah. car driver, you know, is a very much similar thing in bike yeah. race. If you go in there and you're not scared or you're not scared, but, you know, you, everything's got to be calculated, but that's the same sort of knock-on effect. Um, a couple of years ago, I had a um, had the honour of, of interviewing Jeremy Burgess, who lives here in Adelaide, mm-hmm. and, and had a really good conversation, really nice, down-to-earth guy. And he and I asked him, you know, what's the juice? How does it work? All that sort of stuff. And he, and he said, you know, about Valentino and doing all that sort of stuff. He said, it's in your blood. It's in your blood. It's it's what makes you get up at minus three. It's what makes you go to the sand. It, it's what makes you go to. T- it, it's just there. Well, it's not even like you know. Look at Rossi now, forty years old. He's got an empire underneath him. We're bringing young and up and gum, young and uh, talented kids on that, which push him. And he's actually trying to teach them to hmm. almost be better than him. But he thrives off that. And you know, that's it's something that. You can't. What you know? What would he do now? What you go when, sit on a boat all day, or you know, fish? You know, just. when he finishes racing on a Sunday, he'll fly home, and then he's riding on his own track on Monday. So I got any? I don't even like bikes that enough to do that. <laughs> but so, yeah. uh, he's got so much, um, yeah, Passion, love yeah. for it. Passion is ridiculous with him. It's well, funny how motorbike tracks are the shape of an island, aren't they? And you ride in TT, and it's a. The whole thing about the asylum that you go to the island mm. you get into it it's it's a very tribal thing it's it's been really cool to talk to you guys and, and pick your brains awesome. um, well i'm gonna um, i'm gonna start to wind things up but mm. i've got a few quick questions to ask the guys and so davo just uh with you this year um everyone should look out for you isle of man tt this year i'm um, fingers crossed i'll be there i'll be up there to give you a smack on the back before you go out mm-hmm. i'll and, be um, there as well giving them a kick <laughs> We, we should put a Hunatic sticker on his ass, shouldn't we? That'll right cost there. you. I was going to say, I'm sure. <laughs> not, I'm if sure we, not if we give I'm you the sure little Harvey tap of good luck on oh, yeah, and the guy yeah. from Honda will send me, <laughs> send yeah, me yeah, an invoice yeah. afterwards. <laughs> but, um, and Billy, yeah, can't wait to see you, Levi, um, the Neves, all the fast guys out in Stockdale, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it should it's be good. It's a real brilliant class. I mean, you know, it uh, probably doesn't get the credibility it deserves. Like last year, some of those races. I might do a were, couple of rounds of him. Yeah. yeah, I'll help him win the championship. Take everyone else out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I guess to, to wrap things up, I want to find out from you both. So I'll ask you first, Dave, and then you can ask an, answer the same questions. What's the what's the best memory or of of a bike specific bike that you've ridden, and what's the most favourite track you've ridden? Um, the the best bike that creates the most attention is the Norton, the factory Norton. When I, the first the first of and uh, well the two I rode for not for two years um, 16, 17 the second year was different again so that has to be like the most iconic bike like stand out you put those leathers on and like I, I, I was riding with another team as well and Superstock a BMW team and I had those leathers on I was walking through the paddock and everyone was like oh yeah as soon as I put the freaking the superhero leathers on that Bill says like they're full chrome freaking leathers. He looks like a lure up and around everyone the was like it was just a like a fly on shit. It was just mental. I couldn't go anywhere with them on. But uh, yeah, so that bike you and that whole situation. You should have him with like a soundtrack, you know, like an Iron Man soundtrack. <laughs> 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 he just walks straight through the park. Yeah, it was a cool I was just worried about so. not spilling me pint when I was walking behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I was worried he was even going to freaking get to the track. I'll probably know the answer to the second part of the question, but yeah, what's the what's the best? Well, you'd be surprised. Ever? It's actually uh, Saxon Ring in Germany. Wow. Okay. Mm. What is it about Saxon Ring? 
I don't know. I just really loved it when I raced there. It's um, flowing. All yeah, the time. it is. It is really flowing. It's tight, but it flows, and you're just on the side of the tire for so long. Yeah, I just I really enjoyed that. But it was a very close second to Spa Frank Jumps, which you'd know that place yeah. quite well being oh, car yeah. guys. Yeah, 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 <laughs> how, do you, how do you say it? Uh, spa Frank and Jumps. Oh, I just call it Spa. Yeah, see. <laughs> is it from Champs? Franca Champs. I don't know. Franck. It's half French. Actually, it's actually, half Dutch, half French. We're, we're just, it's I'm weird. just gonna, I'm just gonna butt in here quickly because um, <laughs> Dutch talking, Hater. talking, yeah. talking accents. Um, Davo over there does an amazing Irish accent. Does he? So just, just ask him. Just have a quick conversation. Well, with just him. quickly you before you say that, the, 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 the two, the two accents that are, I believe are the most well received worldwide anywhere on the planet is the Australian accent and the Irish accent. The Go Irish. On. Get to. F- yeah, no, it's gate, isn't it? Get, gate to, gate to, yeah, gate to, f- f- yeah, gate big to f- f- Roger. Davo's gate. <laughs> <of> f- <laughs> All right, so across the table, there's a, there's a few friggin' brums there. <laughs> you, you've, you've ridden a pretty, uh, a pretty wide range of amazing bikes in your time. What's what's probably the coolest, most exciting experience yeah, you've probably, had on a bike? Probably the, yeah, the, that new Moto 2 one, the 765, that was pretty cool um, with all the Moto 2 stuff on it. And uh, probably the best track would be probably Thruxton, I reckon, or um, Phillip Island. It's probably my two favourites. Thruxton's just pretty cool because just the tyre spinning and slideways and it's just almost like riding on the grippiest clay or something like that. You know, it's just a weird feeling. Davo loves it there as well. So it's pretty cool, um, pretty pretty bumpy and weird but just tyre life is just a massive crucial thing but it's just so much fun just spinning the bike what's the oldest bike you've ever ridden um, oh, I think oh, that, a, that bike at the yeah um, I did the lap Brooklyn's. around Brooklyn's on oh, yeah. a supercharged Triumph I think it's I don't know what year that was For like 20s or it was something the first yeah you first, have to hand crank yeah you right? put me on the full outfit with the bucket lid the yeah, leather yeah. jacket and <laughs> had goggles. These, do, like do, these do, welding do, gloves do, on leather there. goggles yeah like. it was like these welding gloves on there that I couldn't even feel anything in there it's just for oh, the oh, pictures and and we don't have too long so I'm going to quickly ask you a question what's the first bike you ever rode I think it was some three wheeled Honda thing a three wheeled Honda uh, Pee Wee 50. Pee Wee 50? Pee Wee 50. <laughs> uh, 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 the same. I, just, I just cracked my hands. Uh, Suzuki DR250. Thank you, gentlemen. Ooh, Look at Yeah, yeah. No, that's all right. I stole it when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to ride a bike. So you want to know if I rode a bike? That's the only bike I've ever ridden. I worked out how to ride it. So. Good lad. So yeah. to wind things up, Davo, um, if people want to follow what you're up to this year, where do they find that? You know, what's the best place for them to see what you're up to? Well, my Instagram and Twitter, Davo Johnson 20 and Davo Johnson, Aussie bike racer on Facebook. Look it up. We might have to get him on the uh, Hold Hoon TV, I think. We might have to do a few bits and pieces with you on there. How does that sound? Does that sound pretty good? We could do that. Where are we going to see you? Yeah, it's uh, at McConnell Racer, and that's then just Billy McConnell on Facebook, Billy McConnell Racing page, fan page, and that's it, yeah. All right, okay. Beautiful. We might actually, if you're going over to the TT, why don't we get you to do some on-air commentary of him as he's racing in his suit in an Irish accent. Yeah, well, I'm normally, <laughs> that, I'm, normally right? uh, I'm normally as nervous as Davo is when he's out riding. That's why I tend to not really and like going over there. If you there. can provide the points. Anyone who suffers enough to it. follow the Hoon TV Instagram yeah. knows all the crap I put on there. There you go. So, yeah, <laughs> there you go. There's how, been a few bits of pieces of these guys How long does it take to do a lap? Uh, Davo, no, that's 36 uh, minutes, is it? Or I, oh, that's another thing I was going minutes, to tell yeah. you. If you in, in Adelaide, you know how to go, you know where the bottom of the tollway is. Yeah. And Malala yes, is getting there through town in 17 minutes. Right. Okay. That's okay. So, so give it a go. Even we, in the car. We, we, need to, we need to work <laughs> out how many points you can have in a lap while you're commentating on here. Oh wow, well, that'd be a good challenge right. for me, man. I'm always up for one. That might work. <laughs> and do a live feed and, on that. And, and have them all lined in saying up. Saying that there's plenty of places on the Isle of Man to have a pint. Correct. Yeah, and have be, them all yeah. lined up and just work your way through them as you're talking about it. It'll be interesting to get across the line. Yes. Yeah. You won't see here. Yeah. I'm it. not going to be there, so I can just make this up. Can't yeah, do it. Let's do it. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Can't wait to see you guys on track awesome Cheers, boys. thanks for having us thanks guys get in buckle up and come for a ride with the hoonatics cars bikes and anything else with an engine in it let's go